Trusting that we are all happy to be in the house of the Lord and that we have come under expectation to hear from above that which God has lotted for the night. I would like to invite you all if you've got a prayer request upon your heart you've got something that you want the Lord to grant to you a situation that you are going through circumstances that you can tunnel through the Lord who says come ye all that are laboring and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest is in this place to see to it that he brings to pass all that he has promised and lotted for this season the Bible says 
ask and ask abundantly that your joys may be filled. Says is the will of the Father that he can give the kingdom unto thee. Especially if your need is for the Holy Ghost. There is a promise to that regard. In such an hour is this. God is more prepared to give you the Holy Ghost than you require it. While we bow our heads for a word of prayer, gracious Heavenly Father, would like to bow our hearts in adoration this wonderful end time evening. We want to come with sensitivity, even in what you have promised in our day and what you are doing in our midst. We want to come with caution knowing that we are not being led by a man or a system but the same pillar of fire that led the children of israel in the first exodus the same pillar of fire that the saints in the new testament the second exodus witnessed and walked with and we believe lord even under this final this third exodus under malachi 4 it is the same light the same life and the same leadership and we are thankful lord to know that you are up to grant that which we require because you have invited us you say come ye all that are laboring and are heavily laden and i'll give you rest in a world where we are wearied by the burden of sin things that so easily beset us in a world where there's a lot of demonic traffic you are here to give us consolation you are here to give us direction you are here to establish us upon that which we have believed even in this season i would like to pray king of all lights that our gathering tonight may not be in vain our gathering may bring forth to pass your purpose and plan our gathering may unlock that seed the gem of life that is locked inside the souls of your children may our gathering align us with our theophanies may our gathering position establish each and every individual upon thine present truth may this gathering lord take away all that is not of thee may it dissolve all doubts may it push back every demonic influence and bring us as your bride to that position that we can stand the way you want us to stand i want to thank you heavenly father even this moment in time that the Holy Ghost that thou hast promised may undertake, Lord, even upon every hand, whatever situation that your children are going through, at home, at work, at school, even in their very lives, the power to overcome, the need, Father, to put the enemy upon his rightful position. You know exactly, Lord, that which your children require, some in dilemmas, needing to make decisions, you are there lord god almighty and you are more than able to align us may you do so this moment in time that after all is said and done praise and glory may be given unto thee oh we appreciate you this moment in time we thank you for this wonderful time this atmosphere this expectation that you've placed even in our lives the expectation to do the impossible the expectation to raise us beyond the curtain of time like you say to john a type of the bride come up hither father we are trusting that even tonight we may by thy word be taken where we have never been even in the word that we can stand worthy of this end time vocation i want to thank you heavenly father may you forgive all sins and trespasses take away all that is not of thee we are binding the mamba and every disruption that the enemy may try to bring our desire is that we can have unction to function at this junction and fulfill your purpose and that which you require even of us we thank you lord god almighty may you take us through even as we are getting into the service we appreciate you and surrender all into your hands in jesus name we pray and everybody say amen praise be
be to God. May the Lord richly bless you, saints. We certainly deem it a grand privilege to be back again in this kind of atmosphere. And we are trusting that every saint is encouraged upon the present truth and you're soldiering on to see to it that the word of God will not return to him void but it will accomplish whatever it has listed in your life knowing that God is depending on you not your neighbor not your pastor not your brother not your sister but you carry an individual responsibility to manifest the word of your day and we are glad that each and every time we gather the Lord is making this clearer to show us we are the rapture generation. We are the people that the world was waiting for. The saints of old, they long to live in the hour that we are living in. And I'm sure they were not longing to just see naked women in the streets. To see corrupt politicians. All the demonic traffic that we have. But I believe they were trusting to see something greater. To see the embodiment of deity. God putting on flesh. The same God that was in Eden. In Adam. Doing great exploits. Without limitation. In harmony fellowship and perfection with his children. He has been promised in our day that there shall be a restoration of that kind of fellowship. In the evening time it shall be light. And this is our season brother where God is more flexible than in any other generation. What he can do with you is what he could have never done with Martin Luther. What he could have never done with John Wesley. What he could have never done with Pentecost. But by the grace of God, he has chosen you and I to be part of this great entourage. A people, a special class of people, a prophetic class of people. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He calls them the rapture generation. A people that will not test death. But in a moment and in a twinkle of an eye, they shall be raptured out of here. That is our faith. That is our profession. I want to appreciate the Lord so much for each and every one of you. We appreciate the work that's been done. We cannot stop appreciating the media team and all the people that are working hard sleepless nights to see that the work of God goes forward it's a great honor to be identified with such hard working people that have received the revelation of their hour. When God's gifts find their place, a blessing flows out of it. But when a man tried to do God a service without it being his will, there is little or no progress that you meet. But we are thankful so much when you find people fitting in their rightful place in such a season like this we do not know if ever we have no more services again this could be the final preparation unto the rapture that final quickening but we want to do our best that whatever comes the Lord may find us prepared as his bride blessed be the name of the Lord and in this season 
we just want every moment of our lives to count for his glory every day every week every month every hour every minute we, we, we just want it to count for the glory of the Lord that Satan may know we are not confused but we know what we have believed and the God that has called us by this mighty shout in this end time the message of the hour so we are thankful so much then I've been on the rapture generation part one was on Friday part two was on Sunday and today is part three as we are talking about the rapture generation I'm talking about you and I hope you relate with what I'm preaching about but I feel that you know I need to go back to track especially in the things that we've been preaching before the lockdown because it's the same inspiration that God has given us we were not trying to patch up but his unchanging continuity I'm sure we have seen the Holy Spirit guiding us through 2019 into 2020 and you've been starting the progression of the series that we've been going through and you can tell that it has been God that has been taking us through and I just thought of bringing you to remembrance some of the things that we went through I'm sure it was on the 29th of October I preached the former and the latter rain the unguarded moment and uh, I remember the series of Jeroboam the Ephratite, the son of Zeruel and then we also had from you know the golden cow scheme to the depth of Satan we had sermons like the vials you know follow the rejection of the seals and we blended everything in January when we had even the communion series so I just thought we can have a reminder that is going to blend with what I want to preach about today by the grace of God praise the Lord now we want to open our Bibles in the book of Luke and also the book of revelations now you can see indeed we are living in a season where something is fixing to happen like the last quotation I read brother Brana made it clear that we must chasten ourselves because the world will go on the way it is we are not expecting to get a hint from the things of the world from the people of the world we're not expecting them to tell us it is you as the bride rightfully dividing the word of truth recognizing your day and this message receiving the grace that God giveth in opening the eyes of your understanding enlightening you that you may understand the scripture of your day that is what can establish you in this end time that you are living in. other than that there is a people that will sleep without oil a people that will wake up and find out whatever that they were talking about 
is done fulfilled and they are, they've missed it and they are not part of it. So we don't want to be part of that class. We want to hold fast to what we've believed. We're not going to be like Lot's wife to look back. We're not going to be like Opa to kiss the word goodbye and betray the message of the hour. We're not going to use this lockdown season as an excuse to backslide. Now this is actually our season that we can manifest who we are. We know the squeeze when it comes. It is there to show the true color. To show the true believer. To show the true saints. People that can stand the test of time. So when an economic squeeze comes, when a pestilence, you know, and this gem warfare attacks mankind through this COVID-19, the bride is actually going to rise a little higher to stand a little stronger to display the dynamics of God like never before. Like David, in the time when Goliath was threatening the children of Israel, he said, is there not a cause? And there is a cause for you to shine. There is a cause for you to kick the enemy. There is a cause for you to keep your balance. There is a cause for the world to know you are not part of Satan's Eden. You are called for a purpose. You are expressed for a sign. And you are here to conquer and to take over. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So I want you to hold fast in this hour. Even as we are coming to the scripture, I'm still on the rapture generation. But for a subheading, space to repent. Space to repent. Now, as I read from the book of, maybe we start with the book of Revelation. Praise the Lord. Now, this is the Titarian Church Age. And I'm sure we've gone through the church ages. Titaria is the dark ages. That's where you find Jezebelism. This is the time of the depth of Satan. Ephesus starts with the depth of God. But Ephesus, you know, it meant you know, aimed at and relaxed. A people that had a vision and a focus. But the same devil that deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden is the same devil that deceived the early church, the new Eve. Is the right? And that Eve who was in perfection who had all the blessings of God who was blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places power to speak the word power to raise the dead shadows healing the sick you know what was happening in the early church is a writer there was authority there was dominion and there was fellowship God was in his people you could not separate that church from Jesus Christ touching that church was touching Christ that's why Saul of Tarsus when he was on his way to Damascus he met with the light the pillar of fire the angel of the covenant the Logos the visible expression of the invisible God God himself and he said to that light who are you Lord the light said I am Jesus who you are persecuting God was showing he is in his church he is one with his church he is in fellowship with his church he was not ashamed to be identified with his church that was Ephesus with the depth of God 
in the right but now from that depth of God we saw the Nicolaitan spirit sprouting up in the right that's the season of the white horse rider which was deception with a bow but no arrow is the right and then he started to creep in the church and as Eve was deceived perverted the early church was also perverted it was beguiled the seed of discrepancy was planted by the enemy the prophet says it was in that unguarded moment that the enemy planted the seed of complete ruination and in that unguarded moment we see the church drifting under the Nicolaitan spirit and from Ephesus we came to Smyrna which means bitterness is that right and from Smyrna we went to Pergamos which means thoroughly married now that Nicolaitan spirit it became a deed it became a doctrine is the right and then we're the second stage to the depth of satan which was barlism now when you see church and politics marrying together like israel and moab the sin that god never forgave that was there at pergamos thoroughly married is the right and then from pergamos we're titaria now now titaria it is the jezebelism spirit is the right so nicolaitin Balism into Jezebelism. Now that's the dark ages. That's the depth of Satan. From the depth of God at Ephesus to the depth of Satan. Are we together? And right there, that's where I'm about to read. They at Titaria. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is the time of the Black Horse Rider. Balism is the right that's the red horse rider that's politics is the right from religion white horse rider red horse rider politics and then out the black horse rider that was economics and it was this season and now the bible speaks and it says and unto the angel of the church in titaria right this thing said the son of god who has eyes like unto a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thine patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Now, I'm going to come to verse 20. You will start to interpret there. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. 20. Kone, chinenda sana kaiwe, nizina walicha msadzi wa awi zabere, achi dhita mporofita, ngeno achi kofunza, ake zavaranda vanga, upombia, na ulazi zimu, zami zimu isiri. We know Jezebel was married to Ahab. And this was not a godly marriage. It's the type of a believer marrying an unbeliever. Bringing in idolatry in the family of God. This was a marriage for political reasons. Now, I'm not going to go deep into that. But you know a believer cannot marry an unbeliever under no circumstances but if you are prepared to make a generation of unbelievers godless children you get a godless mother or a godless father it will bring your entire family into idolatry to worship foreign gods there is 
nothing called I'll change him when I am married or oh, I'll change him when we are married what a person is cannot be changed by marriage marriage is just another stage of life it's not a conversion it's not the Holy Spirit it's a stage of life now Ahabah married an unbeliever Jezebel an idolater and this woman killed the prophets of God and instituted her own worship in the family of God and she became a prophetess and started to seduce the entire body of Israel into the things of the world. Now, now you, you see, Jezebel is a type, you know, of the church. And we know the church that Jezebel types. It is the Roman Catholic Church that has introduced idolatry at Nicaea Council when Constantine married Christian Trinity. I, I think you know what happened. It was that Baalism spirit when Moab attracted the sons of God. Is that right? The Israelites, they were attracted at a party. You know what happened? Them girls of Moab, you know, they were caused to bath to perfume themselves and started to dance in a sexy way. And until they took over the children of God. Is that right? Because after the party, the Israelites took of those girls and God never forgave that kind of sin. It happened again in the times of Noah when the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took unto them. God never forgave. It caused the destruction as well. Is that right? That's hybridization. Exactly what happened in Eden. When the serpent took Eve. Is that right? Praise the Lord. And that is what happened at Nicaea Council. Church and politics. They mixed together. And they produced hybrid religion. God was ousted out. It was now man leading man using religious terminology. Now, that's the Jezebel spirit now. It is the maturity of the Nicolaitan doctrine. The maturity of the Baalism doctrine is the depth of Satan. It is the dark ages. Is that right? Now then, God then says, and I gave her space to repent of a fornication and she repented not. That's where my subject is coming from. I gave a space to repent. This is a church. This is a woman that's been given a space to repent. She's in dark ages because of a false union. When you marry an unbeliever, you enter into a dark age of your life. You understand that? But here God is giving her a space to repent because God cannot call a man to judgment without first warning him. God is not willing that any man should perish but that all should come to repentance. Even though God is long suffering, but Jezebel, listen to what the Bible says. She repented not. He said, Behold, I'll cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. I'll kill a children with death and all the churches shall know that I am here with such the reins in their hearts and I'll give unto everyone of you according to your works. Now, 
wajitio na timbiru waneba vote kainwi ni dobapa zoe danao na mishimu ya now the last stage of the horse rider it is the pale horse rider the combination of the white horse rider red horse rider the black horse rider and it is pale it means death now death is following rejection of a chance to repent a space to repent is given and if it's rejected the generation plunges into death the pale horse rider now we're talking about spiritual death a man crossing the line of mercy and judgment because he has rejected he has spread mercy and I want to tell you something beloved the season that we are living in is not an emotional season we are not dealing with an emotional God make no mistake you reap what you sow if you plant the wind you reap the whirlwind you can have pleasure in your conscience you can console yourself in demonic influences but when the reality comes where you have to stand before God oh brother you reap exactly what you have sown and you must know this is a treacherous hour this is not a season to play it's not a season to, to play church but it's a season to look inside of yourself as the rapture generation to say, is my life worthy of the gospel blessed be the name of the Lord now I, I want to go a little further I'm putting a background that you understand when I say the space to repent because this space to repent I preached about it when I preached grace period is the right dream in your lamp is the right now grace period if you look at it again it's, it's, it's like a space to repent and I want you to look at our season now, when you come to the book of Luke 21 we saw that verse 20 it talks about the destruction of Jerusalem the Bible says when you shall see Jerusalem encompassed with armies they know that the desolation thereof is nigh now this part is talking about the destruction of Jerusalem it's prophesied in Ezekiel chapter 9 now the Bible makes it clear that let them that are in Judea flee to the mountains is the right and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too for these be the days of vengeance that all the things which are written may be fulfilled but who unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days for there shall be a great distress in the land and the wrath upon this people is the right and they shall fall by the age of this word and they shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Yeah. Now, when you look at this portion of scripture, we saw that this was a siege. It was an army of Titus in AD 70 coming to bring vengeance for the works that the Jews had done they rejected the Passover the prophet of their day and his message and when they rejected him God kept quiet for a season as if 
Kutonga. He was not worried about his word. And life went on. People were permitted to continue. But that permission was a space for people to repent. To look back and see that indeed he was the son of God. Indeed he was the Messiah. But many did not use that opportunity to repent. When you do something wrong and nothing bad comes upon you immediately it doesn't mean you have gotten away with what you have done. Things don't operate that way. When you do something wrong and it seems as if God is quiet it doesn't mean you don't need to confess. Because we have people that have been in fornication and later on God blessed them with a car. Now they don't need see no need to confess to make their lives right. We have people that have committed adultery. You, you understand that? But they were promoted at work and they start to feel that God is not worried about my situation I can carry on even if I'm even promoted and you start to thank God with unworthy dirty lips now things don't operate that way there will be an appointed time where you have to answer for every action that's why the Bible says judgment begins in the house of the Lord it's trying to show you if you are not judged in the house of the Lord if you don't judge yourself what awaits thee is that judgment oh brother you don't want life to be like that praise be to God you search yourself you make your life worthy of the gospel you chastain yourself even if it means God seems to be silent Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. amen. So now in AD 70, there was a siege. Now that's what I want you to see. That siege is the same that you are hearing. When the army of Titus came in, it was more like the modern day sanctions. Now back in them days, when you see the army coming, that is the Red Horse Rider. It's military power. They are coming for war. They have calculated. They have counted the cost. They have studied the enemy. And they know where to attack and how to attack. They know the number of soldiers that they require. Now, that's what Titus had done. He had measured Jerusalem. He had seen the zealots. The zealots were the Jews that were political. They had understood their way of fighting. So now they came to put a siege around Jerusalem to say no food gets in. No food goes out. Trade was cut. Commerce was cut. Like in the days of Samaria in 1 Kings chapter 6 when Samaria was besieged you know what happened when people began to eat one another's children the head of donkeys the dung of doves now it was the same type of seed you find in AD 70 he is a right sanctions were put against Jerusalem the, the economy began to go down commerce is the right and people became so desperate but and weak because they could not eat they could not trade oh brother the enemy is very wise when that took place it was after the escaped ones you know I, I like how Titaria is followed by Sardis because Sardis means escaped ones. You know, they escaped from the depth of Satan, Jezebelism, the mother of all hallows, Catholicism. 
upon the door the Catholic. Before Titus came, we also had the escaped ones. The people that paid heed to this call. They went out. Is that right? They escaped that siege. Those that were outside never came in. Those that were in, they went. And we spoke about that. And we showed you these were people that were trained to the voice of their prophet, Jesus, the son of man in their day. Jesus had told them, when you see Jerusalem in Kappa, act like this so there's a certain way of behavior that is influenced by the prophecy of the prophet of our day but when we see modern events unfolding it influences us to behave in a certain manner and even today there are modern events unfolding and there's an influencer from the spoken word coming upon the bride yeah, they come say, a people whose ears are trained to the voice of the messenger but they know how to act but what to do and, and how to live it is the writer so the bride escaped and the siege affected those that did not listen to the prophet of their day you know Titus delayed by two weeks that was the great period that was a space to repent and even today there is a delay even in the judgment upon the world Ababa, it's obvious time is no more you understand that there is no hope in this life there is no hope on this earth you can try everything you can encourage one another you can give each other hope you can call motivational speakers motivational preachers this world has crossed the line of mercy and judgment there is no hope for this generation. You understand that? The earth has expired. And in such a season as this, when judgment delays, it doesn't mean God is saying your sins are forgotten. If judgment delays, it doesn't mean your blessing is a sign that God is confirming your life. When God delays, it's a space to repent. It's a grace period Oh rapture generation You need to awaken To the present understanding Of what God is doing There is a global siege You can run away from that But soon and very soon Every nation Is going to be in debt Right now they are using all the resources That they have Every nation is borrowing Every nation is you know, taking money from the World Bank. Why, why are they doing that, brother? Because there's a siege. There's no more trade. What's taking place? They're exhausting all the resources. When them Jews were besieged by Titus, they ate up all their money until they had no money. In Samaria, they ate all their food until they had no food. You, you get the point so this generation is being driven into desperate circumstances this is a calculated gesture satan is behind it oh you know what i'm talking about everybody must be in debt and the richest city is going to offer money to all the people that are in debt you know Rome is the richest city upon the face of the earth. It has more gold than all the gold of the world put together. And she owns the world bank. And if you are borrowing, who are you borrowing from? When you take money, where are you taking it from? I'm not going to go deep into that. But this is a calculated thing to suffocate all the resources in every nation until we all go back and beg for 
from the one that must set the pace and the music we must dance unto. You, you understand that? Huh? But while this process is taking place, huh? there is a space to repent. Huh? But unfortunately, men will never see it. Huh? The filthy will remain filthy. The righteous will remain righteous. Huh? That's what happens, brother? When God gives room for repentance, huh? people don't see. Am I talking to the rapture generation here? Am I talking to the rapture generation? Somebody say amen to that. No, no, I, I don't have much time. But I, 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 will, I will continue on this note. But allow me to put a background that you understand where I'm coming from. Because I want to show you this siege in Christian dome as well. That something is happening. You see what what happens when 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 a, a superpower puts sanctions upon a country? For instance, maybe there is an African leader that knows his rights, that knows what belongs to his country, who manages to see the loophole through which the European countries were robbing Africans, and then maybe that leader opens his eyes and starts to educate his people that you're not supposed to leave to be an employee but you must be an employer you don't need you know the european countries to be successful we've got enough resources in our country if we can put our minds together we don't need any other nation to be prosperous now that kind of ideology it, it affects the imperialists the capitalists you, you get the point. So when a president starts to be like that, then those who are capitalists, who often exploit African nations, they raise their heads. So who is that man? They start to call him a detector. They start to say, no, he's having his own regime. The next thing, they put sanctions in that country. And when that country is having sanctions, they can't trade with other countries. Their money is inflated. After their money is inflated, a civil war is steered. And you see them countries who are capitalists starting to, you know, to, to finance the opposition so that they can, you know, create a coup or to topple over the government of that man who is now knowing ability to depend on himself without outsiders. But you see what sanctions do? They create a state of desperation. It cuts communication. Trade, commerce and brings inflation. And it creates desperation. That, that man may surrender and say, hey, help us. I'm sorry for thinking like a person who I'm sorry for thinking the way I'm supposed to think <laughs> I'm sorry I, I, I'm supposed to think like a slave <laughs> so that I can be supported you, you get the point but if that man doesn't submit it's either he's assassinated or there's a coup and he's taken out of the government so that ways may continue to be opened for the exploiters the capitalists and the imperialists to come and do what they want so that's common knowledge what i'm talking about this is what's happening there is a mentality of slavery that must always be there in africans for the capitalists to sprout and flourish. But if we don't have mental slavery, they will not flourish. Now, now, now you, you understand what I'm talking about. But you see that kind of sanction is, is what took place in the time of Jerusalem. You, you get the point. They were supposed to submit. They were supposed to surrender because of lack of food, because of inflation. 
Cannibalism, they begin to eat one another. You, you get the point. So the enemy wanted them to surrender. You see, these things, if you look at them now, in the spirit, before we talk about what is going to happen, how you know Rome will you know make a covenant with Israel, they will take the paper money, you know, and they you know enforce the mark of the beast. You know what I'm talking about? That will happen, you know, after the bride is taken. But when you talk about the squeeze, now spiritually the enemy has created a state where he's cutting communication he's cutting trade you remember when people can't have food a angry man becomes an angry man creates a civil war a man becomes weak even spiritually when the enemy puts a siege upon the church he cuts the ordinary pattern the ordinary roots that men used to find food from the men become desperate you, you understand what I'm talking about because food is not coming the normal way the roads are closed the churches are closed now people begin to starve now, you, you know what I'm talking about now the churches have been closed now that's a siege upon the church world oh you know what I'm talking about brother some people are starving as I'm talking they are not eating they are becoming weak in the spirit they are failing not because they are sinners but because they are hungry I want to preach the sermon we are not hungry children but you know that man who went to the doctor he was feeling ill the doctor tried to examine he couldn't find nothing the doctor was surprised until he asked the question when last did you eat the person scratched the head i think three days ago the doctor said oh you are not sick brother sister you're not sick you are just hungry the reason why you're falling into pornography the reason why you're falling to women and men and of things of this world is because you are hungry you're not eating you're not reading your spoken word you're not reading the bible you're not praying anymore you're not fasting you're not following even the word that's why you are weak in your spirit it's not demons no don't blame your ancestors don't blame your saying there are witches in our village that's why I'm failing this not witches you are hungry eat the word you gain power eat the word you be restored glory be to God now you see the siege when it comes it's trying to stop the word from reaching the people because the devil knows they will become weak they will be powerless they will start to eat one another big biting you understand that because nobody is monitoring people spending three hours on the phone big biting <laughs> you know what I'm talking about those things that were tamed uh, tamed that we're no longer affecting you they are rising up again nobody is monitoring me no food is coming to me so you begin to see people becoming weak in the spirit going back to the things of the world that they left you understand this is the time a space to repent but people are going there but in such an hour remember there was an Elisha there was a man in that hour of famine where food was not coming in that was able to multiply food that was able to perform miracles all the bride of Christ they are not hungry children the siege is upon the church world denominations are going to fail every system is going to fail but I want to assure you the bride of Christ is not going to
country fell because she was never in a denomination. It was never about the church. It was never about the pastor. It was a true spiritual relationship established between her and her God. And even in this season, the bride is in communion. He's receiving from above blessings, food, communication. It's a space of repentance for many others. But the bride is moving forward. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, in this rapture season, as I come to a time as I'll be praying with you, in this rapture season, you are the people that must pay heed to the voice that was spoken to you by the prophet Malachi 4. The righteous will remain righteous. You are the righteous that is going to continue in righteousness monitored by a radar, the Holy Ghost standing like Daniel in Babylon overcoming the lust of the eye the lust of the flesh and the pride of life yes the devil may try to pull you back but there's something in you that always vomits every worldliness because you are the rapture generation you are not going to use the space to repent to find yourself in the depths of Satan but you are the escaped ones that comes out of the confusion that studies the moves of the enemy that sees what God is about to do upon the face of the earth that looks at the agenda the devil is trying to recruit an army and people to worship him this is the final rider the Pelos rider his name is called death he's trying to kill people spiritually people driving cars cars dead people married dead people building houses dead the devil is hitting the church world with spiritual death oh, but there is a people that cannot die there is a people that have received the life of God and you are that class of people you refuse to be shaken you refuse to be abused you refuse to be besieged glory be to God you have an eternal channel of communication that cannot run dry in the hour of famine you are receiving food from the ravens in the hour of drought you are in sweet communion with Elohim or in this hour things are happening but the bride is focused let no man deceive you do not be drunken we are in the end time anything can happen at any time and God would not have broken any scripture if the rapture is to take place today God would not have broken a scripture like the clip you listen to there will be an interruption of so many things in the he is going to come sudden destruction upon peace and safety oh get up your Lord wake up bride of Christ keep focused upon the vision refuse to be shaken don't be deceived by the schemes of darkness you are born to rise you are born to live above all the things of the world you overcame them before you can't be overcome now what is Laughter. What is money? What is worldly in them? Come up here. You are able to put the enemy under your feet. Keep that mamba back to the fire. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Satan must know you refuse to be shaken. You refuse to be abused. You refuse to join his army. You are in a better army. And you will never beg the devil. Listen to what Brother Branham says. As I close. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's in the spoken word God in simplicity. It's actually a court. 
that talks about Elijah that you know the Bible says you know if you are the Messiah why then do the scribes say Elijah must first come say Elijah truly shall truly first come and restore all things but Elijah has come already and you knew him not and you've done according to him whatsoever you have listed now Abraham then says you see the simplicity of the coming of Elijah is the same way the rapture will take place John was the Elijah but his name was John he never came called Elijah it had to take spiritual eyes to pull a scripture and see it manifested in John to say this man is the scripture made flesh it's only anointed eyes like Simeon that can hold that child let thy servant depart in peace for you have seen the salvation of Israel seen the word made flesh and even in this day it will take anointed eyes to be part of this great translation no announcement if you're waiting for an announcement you're already left behind because so there ain't gonna be an announcement he says Jesus said he's already coming you didn't know it but he done just what the scripture said you do he restored them you all that received me and believed on me he done exactly what the scripture said you do and they did unto him what the scripture said they would do he's already come you didn't know it he says are you ready he said I want to shock you a little bit the rapture will be that same way it will be so simple no doubt it will be like why till the rapture will come and one of these days and nobody will know nothing about it now don't get up now but study just a minute the rapture will come in such a simple way till the judgment will fall and they'll see the son of man they'll say wasn't he supposed to have such and such wasn't they supposed to be Elijah sent to us and wasn't they supposed to be a rapture Jesus will say it's already happened and you didn't know it God in simplicity the rapture will be so few who go in that bride it'll be maybe one leave Jeffersonville just somebody come up missing they say well you never the rest of them won't know it's alright the, the There'll be one live Georgia, see? There'll be one live in Africa. And let's say there'll be 500 people living who go in the translation. Now, that ain't the church body. This is the bride. That ain't the church. This is the bride. The church will come up by, th by thousands. That's in the next resurrection. They live not for the space of a thousand years. See, but in the bride, if 500 people left the earth this very minute, the world will know nothing about it. Jesus said there'll be one in the bed. And each one, one will be taken. And leave one. That at night time, there could be two in a field over on the other side of the earth. It would take one and leave one. And as it was in the days of Noah, shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man? He said, Think everything will move just as common as it can be people will go to take their grants the pregnant will deliver their children those in courtship will be married everything will move just as common as it can be God just speaks and the rapture will come God just speaks and the rapture
angel come in going out there and the angels come down and shovel out the graves and get out an old dead carcass here what is it? it's born of sin and big to begin with but a new one made in its likeness it will be a secret because he said you come like a thief in the night he's already told us the rapture then judgment will strike sin blood sickness and everything the people will cry for death to take them when the judgment comes Lord why is this judgment upon us when you say there will be a rapture first do you hear that Lord why is the judgment upon us when you say there will be a rapture first you say it's already come and you didn't know it God hiding himself in simplicity oh my it's already happened and you knew it not but the Bible says why don't believers believe the simple signs of his coming that's the problem why don't believers believe the simple signs of his coming they're expecting all these things that spoke of by the scripture that the moon is going to go down the sun in the middle of the day and there's going to be all kinds of things friends come there are simple things simple signs of his coming if you miss those simple signs you'll never be able to see the great things somebody say amen rapture generation space to repent I'm going to go down in the coming days and prove to you how we are going to translate the depth of Satan, Jezebelism in the entire church age. And bring it to our day. But if you are here this evening, you are saying, Pastor, you have spoken, but it wasn't you. God was talking to me there's a lot of things happening in my life I've been going on as if things are normal but like the woman with the blood issue I can feel it life is coming out of me because life is in the blood you know life is coming every time it's dripping out of me spiritual life I'm becoming weaker by every day the things of the world are eating me up pray with me that God may restore me you can touch the hem of his garment right where you are with our heads bowed you can touch by faith like that blind Bartimaeus he touched him by faith son of David have mercy on me his eyes were open maybe you are blind to see the promise of the hour all you see is money all you see is women all you see is popularity all you sees the things of the world but like blind Petimius open my eyes Lord I want to see the promise of my day the message and what you have lotted for the season oh he is right here you can raise your hand where you are all things are possible this is the season that God can restore you this delay is for a purpose this world is overdue the judgment of God are belching beneath every nation every family, every continent but God is giving a space to repent and you are the one that you that can hear that voice if you can believe gracious heavenly father I want to thank you this moment in time you are alive forevermore and your word will not return back unto thee void you speak 
with purpose you speak with an ambition you speak because there's something that you want to do in our lives and if there was nothing that you wanted to accomplish in this season in our lives you would not speak the way thou you have spoken I want to take this opportunity Lord to thank you for opening our eyes of understanding sending the prophet Malachi for our way this message that is meant to prepare a bride amid the world that is become, becoming lacked a people that are taking the order of this world oh God may your bride your people the rapture generation come out of all this slumbering Lord may they make sure their lamps are trimmed and clear and they've got oil in their lamps the Holy Ghost dear God I believe this is the season that all this can be done places where things were not ironed out with God this is the space that you've given us this is the period that you've given us because anything can happen at any time and no man will blame you Lord if you take this world out of existence if you slip out the bride in the rapture no man can stand and blame you because you've spoken it tonight that it will happen and the world will know nothing about it oh God I pray that we may not be blinded by our lusts we may not be blinded by our selfishness we may not be blinded by pride the anoint all spirit but humility and the teachable nature that Lord we may be able to see as you want us to see to live as you want us to live forgive every sin and trespasses give true humility power to confess to confront every demon and push it back demon that's been abusing your children demon that's been possessing and guiding your children out of their path or in this hour of famine where there's a siege upon the church world they have to be an Elisha trained by Elijah a people with a second handed rope operating the miraculous in this season oh God speaking the word into existence spiritual food in due season even though churches are closed we know there is an eternal channel of communication a mystical channel of communication may the bride identify that I pray take away all that is not of thee I pray and beg thee father that none may be left desolate none may be left in their sins none may be left in vomit but let them people come out of the vomit and be cleansed by the waters of the word and stand in their rightful position once again because this is the season that thou has given us when the world is carrying on as if nothing is happening as if you have not spoken anything as the bride we can look at the simple signs of your coming and we can tell something is fixing to happen oh help every individual i pray let it be done in and through our lives according to your perfect will may the devil be dispossessed of every scheme of darkness that he has done against your bride oh father we thank you and we appreciate you may this night be a night of total transformation may your children walk out of darkness into this great and marvelous light may they say goodbye to the world i stay no longer with you i've made up my mind to go god's way the rest of my life oh in this final ride this final moment where the death the palos rider is riding may the equal anointing take us high above where we can use god's spectacles to see the word of god which is the light upon our feet the lamp that you've given us i pray that it be so even for your glory we really love you and we thank you and we appreciate everything lord that thou has done for us you are god and we thank you lord we belong to you and we appreciate you may your holy spirit take over as we are coming to the end of the age may we be found worthy we surrender all in your hands saying thank you in jesus name we pray and everybody say amen praise be to god may the lord richly bless you saints we have come to the end of our service 
hold fast to that which thou hast had. We'll meet again on Friday. Let us remain prayed up and under expectation. Let's go and change the management of our lives. And the devil must know we are not part of the famine. Neither are we hungry children. The spiritual food in due season. A reserve. So through the wisdom of Joseph that has been put in the granaries for you and I. May the Lord bless you. Till we meet again, we're going to take a song by the grace of God. God bless you. among the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Your young men have I slain with the sword. And have taken away your horses. And I have made this thing of your camps to come up unto your nostrils. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord.
Oh